What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at combo boxes with TTK Bootstrap and Kinter. Okay, guys, so like I said, in this video, we're going to look at combo boxes for TTK Bootstrap. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And super quick announcement, tomorrow I'm going to be releasing a new course on tkinter.com where I build this cool chat GTP bot you can see right here. As you can see, I've used custom tkinter to build this thing so it looks cool and modern. And this will connect to the chat GTP artificial intelligence engine that everybody's talking about. You can see you can enter your API code and all this stuff. And this is cool. It just allows you to chat with the chat GTP AI. And we could say something like, I don't know, I'm a vegan, plan my lunch today. And we click the button and we get boom, lunch, vegan, Buddha bowl, quinoa, roasted sweet potatoes, blah, 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 lentil soup and avocado toast. I'm having a big lunch today. <laughs> so you guys are probably familiar by now with chat GTP. If you didn't see the video I did on it last week, check that out. But this is just a little interface I whipped up that you can connect to it. And in this course, I teach you how to connect to it, how to set up an API key, how to do all the things behind the scenes that you need to do in order to start using Chad GTP in your own apps. So all current members of tkinter.com will just get this course for free. It'll show up in their membership as all courses do at tkinter.com once you're a member. If you're not a member, head over there right now, sign up using coupon code YouTube and get 30% off membership. And then tomorrow when this course is released, you'll get that right away as soon as it's done. Okay, so in this video, we wanna look at using combo boxes with TTK Bootstrap. And we've been talking about TTK Bootstrap for a while now, really cool library that allows us to do some really cool style stuff. And you can see we can click on this and I've got it set up two ways. One where if we select the thing, we can click the button and it will update the label. The other way we can just use a binding and say I click on Wednesday, boom, it says you picked Wednesday. So we're gonna look at all of this stuff in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this TTK Bootstrap series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file, I'm just calling it combo.py. It's a regular starter code that we always have. We've imported TTK Bootstrap STB. I set the theme name to superhero and we're ready to go. So let's create a label. I'm going to call it my label. And it's going to be a tb.label. And remember, we're importing it as tb. That's why this is tb.whatever. And we want to put this in root. And I want the text to say, just for now, hello world. And let's give this a font of Helvetica with a size 18. So, okay, that's good. Let's my underscore label dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad y of, say, 30 to really push it down the screen. Okay, so now. Let's create drop down options. And I'm just going to create a variable called days, and this is going to be a Python list. And so we can go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> this is very exciting. Friday, Saturday. We should probably capitalize Saturday. It's the most important day. And Sunday. So we've got this Python list and we're gonna use that to insert into our combo box to have the options that drop down whenever we click on the combo box, right? Basic combo box stuff. So now let's create combo box. And up here, let's say create label. We don't want the label to be jealous that it didn't get its own comment, right? <laughs> so let's go my combo, call this anything you want. And this is gonna be a tb.combo box. And we want to put it in root and let's give this a boot style of say success to make it green. And if you're not familiar with this color system, check back the previous videos in this series. I go over all that in great detail. So we want to also set the values to days and that's just this list we created right there. And really that's all we need. So let's now my underscore combo dot pack this guy and let's give this a pad y of 20. Now let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure this is looking okay. So I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's just go python combo.py and when we do, we see this drop down list. It says it has all these listed. When we click on them, nothing happens. And you'll notice by default, it's blank. So we can set that to anyone we want by default. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say set combo default. And we do that the same way we do it as in regular kinter. We just call my combo dot current and we pass in the number of the thing we want to show up. So Python lists always start at zero. So if we want Monday, it's zero. If we want Tuesday, it would be one, right? So we can set that to zero. Let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that's looking okay. And sure enough, now it says Monday there instead of it being blank. And you notice that it's green. That's the success color. 
We can change that by changing it to primary or danger or info or any of the other, the default, whatever you want uh, for your color. So, okay, that's good. So now let's create a button to where when we select one of these and click the button, something happens. This text up here changes. Super easy to do that. Let's create a button and I'm just gonna call it my underscore button. And this is gonna be a TB dot button. We wanna put it in root, we want the text to say, click me, <laughs> whatever. Let's give this a command of clicker and let's give this a boot style of, I don't know, danger. We'll make it red, right? So then let's my underscore button, dot pack this guy and give him a pad Y of 20. Okay, so now we've got this clicker command and we need to create it so that when we click that button, something happens. Let's come up here to the top and let's define clicker. And what do we want to do? We just want to change our label. So let's go my underscore label dot config. And let's just change the text. And I'm going to create an F string and say, you clicked on. And then we can pass in my underscore combo dot get. And that will get whatever we have selected. So let's put a little exclamation mark on there. And okay, we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. See if that worked. So we can click on Friday. You clicked on Friday. Woo and that's all there is to it. Super simple. Now we can also bind this thing. So when we, so that we don't need a button at all, we could just click on here. Say we click Wednesday, the text will change to you clicked on Wednesday, right? So how do we do that? Well, same way we do it with regular Kinter. Let's come down here and let's bind the combo box. So once we do this, the button will be pretty much irrelevant. We won't need to click it anymore, but I'll just leave the button there for now. So let's go my underscore combo dot bind. And then inside of here, this is always the format. You have an action and then a command of some sort. And let's say click underscore bind or something like that. And this is the function that will get called whenever we click the combo box. And inside of here, we just use two sets of these angular brackets and we pass in combo box selected, right? And the C is capitalized and the S is capitalized. The B in box is not capitalized. And I see people make that mistake all the time. So make sure that's lowercase. So combo box selected and this function will get called. Now we don't have this function yet. So we need to come up here and create it. And let's create binding function. And so let's define our click bind. Now this is a binding and with all bindings, we need to pass an event because a click is an event and that needs to get passed to the function. Now we're not actually gonna use that for anything, but it still needs to get passed because the binding will send that extra info. And if the function doesn't see it, you're gonna have problems. So now we can just copy this whole thing and paste that in there. And let's give this guy a comment too. Create, I don't know, button click function. Good enough. Okay, so that should do the trick. Let's save this and head back over here, run this one more time. So now when we click on here and let's pick Saturday, hey, you clicked on Saturday. If we click Wednesday, you clicked on Wednesday. Now if we click this again, nothing happens because it still says Wednesday and that function will get called and it'll just say you clicked on Wednesday, which is what it already said. So it doesn't look like it's changing, but whichever way you want to do binding or using a button, super easy with TTK bootstrap. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF version of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, has over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. You can get your free copy at tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for tkinter.com membership so you'll be one of the first to see this chat GTP bot course when I release it tomorrow. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com, and I'll see you in the next video.